How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another very special episode of Table Zero. We are joined by the beautiful Twitch chat today. Just as a reminder, I got like a month off of work, so I'm going to be going back to streaming. So follow me, twitch.tv slash galzotcg. The link is in the description below. And I am joined by a wind fairy that can negate... Uh, no, I can't. I'm so washed, man. I'm joined by Fi. I'm uh, it's a dark spell, a dark spell caster with 1200 attack and 2200 defense, and it's a level six. And you'll find me in the graveyard during the draw phase. Whoop, you can discard me if you can have no cards in the grave, and then yeah, you don't get a grave for two turns. I'm joined by Fi. How's it going, man? We just uh discussed our ban list uh, day routine. How's your day been so far? Uh, it's been good. I've been taking it easy. Once again, I kind of was like telling stream before we got started, but took my dog on a do to the dog park, talked about the ban list with the folks out there. Um, and, you know, they gave me a weird look. Um, I came back home, edited some videos, and now I saw a ban list. I reacted, but I didn't share it with anyone because I'm only sharing it here. Mm. Yes, this is a exclusive reaction. I had to, like, I was sitting on my reaction for, like, you know, I, I was waiting for, like, weeks at this point. Every single <laughs> evening, I, I would turn on my camera, i turn on the lights, because I wanted to be first. I wanted to be first because I'm always first, usually, on YouTube. I do, like, a five-minute take, six-minute take, upload really quickly. Thank you to Fiber. Um, and then, you know, thumbnail, and, and we go. Uh, I like being first. But this time... I gotta say it was a little bit different. I we're gonna get into in this episode today. Obviously, we're gonna break down the ban list. Um, of course, if you haven't followed Fi on his YouTube channel and Twitter, please do. The link is gonna be in the description below, as always. And uh, we also have this podcast on Spotify, maybe Apple Mu uh, Apple Podcasts too. Just Spotify, maybe. It's been so finicky. Apple yeah, Podcasts has not just, been fun. To the read. links are in the description, so you can just click them yes. and see if it's up. It should be up, but maybe sometimes it won't be. Um, so before we get into breaking down the actual ban list, we're joined by chat here. Say hi to YouTube, guys. We're happy to have you here. Welcome, dusting off the, the old Twitch chat. Um, so first, like, gut reaction to the ban list... Uh, we'll share our gut reactions and then we'll go into like breaking down what actually happened, winners, losers, and what's the future going to be looking like. Because I got to tell you, it's not looking super pretty, but we can always complain. My gut reaction, you know me, uh, and which deck I really love to play. When I saw that Albion Sanctifier Dragon <clears throat> was not on the Forbidden section, my heart sank. Because I knew that Branded Fusion was going to be a one. I mean, I was fe I was sure that like, okay, if it's not forbidden, there's no way they didn't address the deck at its entirety. And they did, in fact, limit Branded Fusion. Um, which is obviously like, you know, three years the deck has been like running. Branded Fusion has been out for almost two and a half years. At this point, mm -hmm. I think I think it's fair, but we'll get to whether that was the right um, call. I ended the balanced video like Gallo, a little bit huge winded. I was like, "Damn, it actually happened!" Now we need to like figure out and like grass as well, uh, which is huge. What about you, Fire? I was surprised by the very first thing that was on that ban list, the very first ban, and that was Gallo, Fiendsmith Lacrima. And I was actually like, I was shocked for just a moment, but then I was like. Wait, this is actually like a really cool, really cool hit. Yeah. I think everyone's like, this list is terrible. And there's, to a certain extent, I, I can see where you're coming from. We'll, yeah. we'll dive into it in just we'll a talk moment. About it. But, but there are some long awaited hits as well on this. And I think there has been a lot of community feedback yeah, huge uh, that has gone into this ban list, actually. I think Konami. Though they are a silent watcher, they do listen and uh, they do understand the gripes. So, um, no. you know, as much as uh, we think that they're hands off with uh, or you, the game Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, they actually got a lot of things right with this. They got a lot of things right here. Um, I'm 
again, we'll dive into it like now, basically. Um, they got some right. hits and they got some misses. And we need to talk about it. I think the first one, Fiendsmith's Lacrima. So people were saying that there there has to be some acknowledgement to Fiendsmith because of how like explosively it came into uh, you know the meta game. It was just like explosive. Yeah. You you could not ignore it. And I think like you know obviously Moon of the Closed Heaven was a card that people thought could be a target and an easy target as well because you know people people suspect that rarities have some sort of thing to do with the the ban list 100 percent. they might they might i think it's more of like strategy of like selling different sets or not but yeah obviously you don't want to ban a card that just cost people like a ton of money especially if it's like a secret mm -hmm. from a core set but lacrima so i think it was the which one was first? I think it was the NAWCQ that was first with Info Legal. And yes. it was extremely apparent from that tournament that decks are like decks. I'm talking about Snake Eye specifically. Snake Eye is like super long combo. You bell super long combo. Fiendsmith Lacrim on top of it. Games were coming to time. And this card was winning games left, right, and center. And immediately it was super clear that, you know, Dogwood was in the equation as well, right? But Lacrima is, like, so accessible, you don't need to draw it, that it's a huge problem. And it's a pretty good hit to the Snake, to the Fiendsmith engine as well. So it's kind of like yes. two birds with one stone, and also extremely accurate, in my opinion. It's exactly what they needed to do. I want to talk one part about this card, so I've been playing Fiendsmith Magical Musketeer at my locals for about the last two weeks. Yeah. And the amount of Lacrima mini games that mm -hmm. I've had to play, almost half of my matches have come down to a Lacrima mini game uh, to just burn my opponent for 1200 and win the duel. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Awful. Like you don't, you don't think that like a burn effect could actually have that much decisiveness in a game. Like, come on, we had Long Wan for like running around a format for at least half a year, up to a year at that point, 1200 burn every single time you synchro summon. But the thing is, is that games just take so much longer from back then that Lacrima burn is just actually game ending. Um, I'm a little sad to see the card go because I've been enjoying Fiendsmith Musketeer and this is one of the most helpful cards to get yourself back into some certain engines. Uh, it can reborn any light fiend yeah, also huge uh, from the graveyard or banished. That includes any magical musketeer monster. So it's a lot of recursion for your deck. Um, that's the only thing I'm sad about. But in the grand scheme of Yu-Gi-Oh, this is a very good hit. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it was getting to a point where it, there are some cards, and I think last time it happened, it was Mystic Mine, that for me w was like seemed as a card that konami was at least konami in the west because just because there's so many events and so many streams that they felt kind of embar embarrassed about like they didn't want to show like that aspect of the game so often i think the you mentioned long yuan and you mentioned there were of course like you know sprite sprints and um you know the, um, the volcanic guy uh, there there were other burn win conditions However, there there's something about Lacrima that, first of all, is any two monsters equals I can win in time right now. It's accessible no matter what. I don't have to draw it. I don't have to do anything. I put two monsters on the board. I can just play until I decide, oh, okay, now it's time to burn you. It's in my extra deck. That's time. However, yeah. the thing about Lacrima is that it's not only a burn card. And that's why it probably warranted a hit a little bit more because it's also an engine card of a very, very strong engine. So that's why I was saying like two birds with one stone because it deals with, you know, the engine can still... I mean, I don't like the fact that Moon is still a thing, but uh, we'll, we'll probably get to that. Uh, it is like hyper accessible in any deck. But Lacroma was probably the most controversial and immediately 
unhealthy for the game in Fiendsmith. So they addressed it, and I think I think that's a huge W. I th- I love this more than anything in this in this list. There is also one more thing: is that we have other TCG accessible cards that got given to us here. Uh, Aerial Eater is probably going to be the primary way that you actually get into your other engines, yeah. and that is a extremely strong card. You know, it's funnily enough, uh, Aerial Eater. Let's just say I'm bringing up Fiendsmith Musketeer because this is all I'm thinking about. But you go Aer- Aerial Eater, dump a, uh, a magical musket, and then you can go into Muckraker of the Underworld and reborn that musket. So like. In a realistically speaking, um, you know, Lacrima kind of already exists uh, with with Muckraker of the Underworld. So it's not necessarily for Fiend decks. It's not the end of the world um, to lose Lacrima. But for decks that want to spam this card as an engine, um, this is a very well thought out hit. I think this is uh, that's why I'm really like happy with this ban list because they came through with a very interesting ban that actually does solve a lot of problems. I think Lacrima is the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest W on this list. Um, but there are 28 other cards on this list. This, this is list is enormous. Granted, the semi-limited and, and unlimited section is just like nothing. It doesn't matter, like all of the cards there. Um, but a lot of like freeing up space on the list. Next up on the list... Apollos above the goddess. I think this was something that people were clamoring for. Um, personally, on one hand, when I was like starting to like the- theory craft branded for the next format, I was like, "Damn, there's <laughs> there's no Apo. I'm so happy. Like I don't have to deal with an Apo. That was the bane of my existence. Like it was like soloing branded sometimes. But on the other hand, it sucks for, for me to see. Like, the TCG is taking such a different approach than the OCG right now when it comes to what Snake Eyes has done to the game. In terms of, like, the OCG, they're taking it really slow. They're, like, bringing down the power level very slowly and consistently consistently across the board. While the TCG is, like, Snake Eye can cause a lot of problems in terms of, like, just, like, spamming bodies. So we need to get rid of all the bosses so that the engine is worthless. Which sucks. I mean, I was happy to see Baron go. But then Linkaribo and and Savage and now Apo. I'm not super happy to see these go. Because I don't like these iconic, important cards to pay the price for a deck that's going to be gone very soon. So, yes, these cards are iconic. They've got aura. But at some point, they kind of have to go. And I, I actually... I'm really interested when you remove all these generic monsters to summon out of your extra deck, you have now you're running out of options to just turn things into engines anymore. Like think about it like that. It's almost like the end of the splashable engine when you're running out of generics at this point. I, I agree, but like, it's, it also needs to come with a complete game design philosophy change. And it's not necessarily what's going to happen. Like it needs to come like snake eyes is not a deck. Like, you can't build a body. a pure Snake Eyes deck because they don't have, like, their boss monster is a main deck monster, right? They, mm. they need to create something different, and this is why the extra deck is such a unique resource in Yu-Gi-Oh! But, like, banning the generic bosses, which is fine, needs to come with a design change in the main decks. Like, they need to start designing decks, like, more whole. Yeah. Otherwise, they, they won't I mean, do anything. Snake Eyes was literally built to spam bodies at this point. So it's for, I mean, there are like, again, main deck options in the design, like Silvera, for goodness sake. Ooh, negate. Oh my God. With like Flamber's yeah. IP. Um, so like that, but the idea of yes, uh, I mean, they're, they're trying to take away just, you know, link fodder dot deck basically and that's what snake eyes was um and they're trying to turn things into their own unique game plans rather than how many bodies can i spam out in a single turn and that's a that's that's what i find pretty cool like ubel focuses on the fiend aspect 
uh, of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. You have. I agree. You know, you and you know the Tempai dragons are Tempai dragons, plus all the other fire dragon synchros that exist in the game. So it's not just some like splashable engine. Now every deck is starting to have more identities than I spam bodies, basically. Yeah. So it's a that, good that divine philosophy rocks. Appaloosa was a great payoff for a deck that is extremely generic and is comprised of just like spam. It was a very good payoff. Um, but I must say it's obviously a very, very strong card. I think the reason I'm sad is that Appaloosa was, uh, first of all, would have never gotten banned and is not banned in the OCG right now, but would have never got gotten banned now without Snake Eyes, maybe in the future. like it may, Maybe it was inevitable. Um, and also, I think Appaloosa's design is cool. I think a card mm -hmm. that weakens itself as like you know it uses its interactions i think it's cool um but god bless also something i thought about was that this is like like the lacrima hit before getting the second wave of support to fiendsmith is pretty big for konami they know rage of the abyss is gonna sell because of maxi but that's a pretty ballsy move i would say um yeah Right, because they they they're getting another Fiendsmith card. Like they're getting another like f two Fiendsmith cards actually, um, in the next set. But we'll talk about that maybe at a different time. Hot Red Dragon Archie and King Calamity. Goodbye. Dun, 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 I'm crab. See ya. Fucking, he's gone. See bye ya. Bye. Finally. Bye bye. I think that's all there needs to be said about that. Yeah. Is he's he's gone. Why the card should never exist. Yeah, goodbye. Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, together with Fiendsmith Lacrima on the same list. Um, Good. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the year is 2024. Um, if Lavalval Chain and Curious are on the forbidden list, Beatrice is there as well, especially when this is a time where it is probably the easiest thing to put out two level sixes on the board. Like, there's so many ways to do that. Um, yep. and, and like once on your turn, once in your opponent's turn, uh, yeah, I mean, sending the blackout laughs is, yeah, else. it's just obnoxious when you have everything. Um, it means that a lot of like, uh, angel of blue tears, garbage are gone. Um, yep. so many, so many toxic stuff due to Beatrice. It's very strong to send cards from the deck. And I think this is a well-deserved hit. No, nobody, nobody cares except Farfun. Maybe nobody, nobody's. Yeah, the, Beatrice wasn't even good in BA. Yeah, so. That's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, any other it's about, thoughts? It's just about like high time, high time for these two to go. Yeah, that's my thoughts. These two are like long gone, and uh, goodbye. It was a long, long awaited for. I think Beatrice. Nothing much to say. Again, I think it's just like the um, the the things that Beatrice lets you do maybe in a world where it was like sending any monster to the graveyard maybe we could have like you know talked about it but um good thing it's gone anything missing from the forbidden section anything that's like should have been banned i mean i think everyone was expecting some snake eye card to pop up on this list but yeah once i saw no no card that is named snake eye that has snake eye in its name on this section I knew the deck is not really hit. I'm just saying tins are releasing in about three weeks, so there's got to be some cards in there from Age of Overlord. Congratulations! So, yeah, Flamberge probably. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, yeah, Sanctifier. Most people said should be here. Yeah. Um, Dimension Shifter is not on this list as well. This is. Um, Continuing Konami's policy to give players who are newer to the game extremely strong tools to shift the game. Um, there's no really a need for Dimension Shifter in the in the game besides nope. like Dimension Shifter doesn't enable anything like it's the same thing by the way with like it's not only the shifter hate. Like the same thing goes for Droll and Lancia, which are the same card in a different flavor. They shut down a mechanic. Um, yep. So th there's no benefit to the card. It doesn't enable anything. It just gives 
extremely powerful tool in other players' hands. Um, so we talked about Shifter. We talked about um, Sanctifier. I think it is unfortunate that they did not hit Sanctifier, but we'll talk about it with a branded hit. Uh, it's very unfortunate. And one more card, I think, that could have maybe used, you know, to be on this list is Dimensional Barrier. I think the card is just, like, one of the most obnoxious cards ever printed. Like, no card should be this strong. But, you know, it's a, it's a countermeasure, I suppose. Yeah. Like, looking down a 10 pipe player, I'm happy I have the barrier. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy. I don't. I don't want to be without it. Let's go into uh, the limited section. The first card. Let's talk about the two cards that came back from the dead. Eva comes in the place of Beatrice, most likely. Um, yeah. Interesting. You know, I have probably less takes on Eva than you do. I I started playing right when Drytron was like dying off. <sighs> There are so many things you can do with Eva um, at the current moment. There's a lot. Um, there's been a, a bit of fairy support that has kind of come down the pipeline. Uh, I forgot. I Melodious was Voiceless. Through. Yes, exactly that. Um, yeah. So Eva becomes like a very scary card. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you're going to be able to use it, but that card has potential already. Just. A card that reads sent to graveyard search and um yeah the, this eva will be an interesting bit yeah i think it's a uh, honestly i'm gonna say i think it's a cute again i don't think i fully understand the scope just because i didn't really play against it a lot um but i would say that if hopefully nothing <laughs> it's like wishful thinking but hopefully nothing too degenerate comes out of it i hate the herald of the orange light so Screw that card. I don't like... Yeah. And, and like, uh, you know, fairies. There's so many toxic, like, Lancias and Vanities, Fiends and Rulers and whatever. I don't like those. But if it means, like, a nice buff to Voiceless and Melodious that really need it, let's see. Let, let her cook, I suppose. Um, the other card is a card that honestly was my... Number one wish list to come off the ban list because uh, it is legal in Master Duel and I've been playing around with it. And it's that grass looks greener. It's a card that like has been forbidden for a while. It is a card mm -hmm. that is um, back when it like back in its prime, it was used in like very degenerate and like dangerous decks and. I think now, now it could, uh, I'm happy that they gave us this for experimentation because the fact mm -hmm. is, like in today's metagame, if you think about it really, like 40 to 44 is like the prime number you want to be at. Decks want to be consistent, small, lots of non-engine. You know, these are the types of decks that Konami designs in 2024. And in order to play grass, like, first of all, at one, it's definitely not as impactful, right? Like, you're going to draw it sometimes. But you really need to build your deck around it. And the decks that could probably benefit the most of it, honestly, one of them is probably branded. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, those decks need to be kind of built with that card in mind. And maybe that's fine. Like, putting branded aside right now, because we're, we'll discuss it in a second... But, the, you know, I can think about, like, the Paleos, your, uh, your Infernoids that their support kind of failed. It kind of, you know, it kind of flopped. It failed, it failed because it just doesn't have enough mill cards is the problem for Noids. Like, yeah. you, don't have, you don't have Reasoning. You don't have Reasoning at three. You don't have Monster Gate at three. So, and, but, I mean, congrats. Now, now there is Reason to play left arm offering for grass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to be fair, that Ash Blossom's going to cook. <laughs> <laughs> but but let him uh, cook, man. I guess. I guess that's what I like about grass is that you really have to um, sort of like put blinders on and be very focused on the fact that you need to resolve grass. 
in a deck like Brand, it's not so much the case, but in a deck like Infernoid, you definitely want to resolve it. And if the other decks in the format are like tight 40s with tons of hand traps, maybe maybe it's a fine like counter to the meta. Maybe it's like fine to let yeah. those decks experiment and build their decks in order to resolve grass. And at one, it honestly doesn't do much. It's going to be a little bit sacky. But yeah. I mean, I think most people, when you play up against a grass deck, you also just have to accept the fact that you are playing against a deck that has that grass looks greener. Like you can't get, you can't get mad at the card because yeah. like they're playing that deck with the point of resolving that card. Yeah. So it's like, yes, you will. They will draw it um, about ten percent of the time in their opening hands. Um, but that doesn't even mean like in modern Yu-Gi-Oh that you instantly lose the game either. Yeah, definitely. I'll say yeah. that because. Because grass is in a different era. Uh, grass during its time was... Fairy Tale Snow was probably the most abusable card um, ever back then. Um, also, just the power of, like, just ranked fours. Like, it was around for, like, Zodiac piles were around during the time as well. Um, and you'd just be playing engine decks. But these days, you can't really play an engine deck with much payoff. Um, at least besides like noise, but you're not really going into the extra deck with that. Um, so I actually think grass, while an interesting card, and yes, it's a bomb, it absolutely warps the game once it gets activated. Um, it is, it is a difficult card and that's why I like that card. There, there are also less cards to abuse it, right? Yes. And, and less again, uh, and as I was back on my point, yeah. yes, there's just less cards that, that abuse grass. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think Grass is one of those let, let them cook moments. Strong card. It's not like an insignificant unban. It's a it's a significant unban. But let's see it cook. This is not a floodgate. And, you know, the more the merrier. Um, yeah. So, the elephant in the room. We got Snake Eye Ash and Snake Eye Poplar to one. That's... Still tier one. So... Let's talk about it. Is it still tier one? Is it still tier one? Like opening poplar must suck ass. Like drawing hard drawing poplar in your opening hand. It's still combo. But like you're not ending on Apo. You don't have Lacroma. What do you do with Snake Eye? Now you can play a it's an engine. engine. It's an engine, yeah. Different... I mean you can still play a different normal engine. Um, do you think you would play Birch just to have another name? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't uh, think Birch. so. Because you have less names to to, to proc uh, Birch, right? You're less Plus likely to have playing points. Two Oak, basically, is, uh, is a way you can take it. Or you could just play, like, a different, like, again, engine combination that just, like, substitutes the yeah. lack or of you just, in the deck now. Or you just replace the, you know... You take out three cards from the deck. You know, you can just put in some Fire King cards, maybe. I think Fire King could see. Again, but yeah. you're not making Apo. First of all, like, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to play Nibiru. But, you know, if you're not playing Ubel, you're not going to have an answer to it currently. Like, Azamine is around the corner. But right now, um, that's not the case. So, like... It's it's interesting that like Apo kind of balances the fact that it's not really a hit because you still have three Bellstar, three Wanted, still have Flamberge, you still have like all the Snake Eye names essentially. But the fact is that like a lot of the good cards, like like Bonfire is a little bit less good. Ash maybe it's it's worse. I don't know. It's a definitely a weird hit. Seeing those cards still legal is a problem because obviously banning Poplar would have been game over. I mean, but now it's still like, remember, guys, like this is the main lore theme of the game right now. So they they need to continue this story and like imagine, <laughs> imagine them banning Cartesia. Even though granted Cartesia was not as strong, but it's sort of like banning Cartesia before you get a chance to play Grangenyol. In the next set, right? 
Yeah. They need to see the story through, and unfortunately, the main lore of the game, I don't think they thought it would have been it would be this strong, to be honest. I think it's, you know what? I mean, these hits are I don't mind. So, okay, so like what what is Snake Eye even doing these days? I guess they can end on a Desiree. Um, but again, their entire end board can just get nibbed. They could just like you can just wait. Uh, there's no way for you literally Snake Eye. don't need to do anything. You just wait with the nib in hand. I mean, unless you think they're gonna make Wave King, which means they have to commit to playing Aerial Eater and then burn their. Um, the thing is, it's like now the Fiendsmith without uh, Beatrice has no way to one card combo into his Snake Eye Ash anymore because you mm -hmm. know you'd go make Lacrima, summon back the uh, the Fiendsmith. Um, with the so fusion summon Lacrima with Sequentia, make the uh, lac uh, Lacrima will summon back a Fiendsmith, make Beatrice. Beatrice will send Snake Eye Ash, and you make Promethean Princess, and Princess will bring back to Snake Eye Ash, and then you do Snake Eye stuff. Um, so now, like in general, the Fiendsmith cards don't they don't bridge anymore. Uh, they're kind of just their own thing. They're just kind of extra bodies. But yes, uh, as our, our our friend Gus in the chat is saying, there is still Wave King. So you can still go Aerial Eater with the Fiendsmith Sequencia, and you can dump any Fiend you like, maybe another Fiendsmith, and then go ahead and shuffle back the... and go for, you know, Fiendsmith, someone back from Graveyard, and try to make a Wave King there. Yeah, you have uh, a pretty good read on, worse. on when to nib, and, like, if you nib there, by the way, then the end board is like, what? <laughs> Best case scenario, yeah, like they have the giant normal summon snake eye ash. Yeah, they, they have, have to first of all normal ash. summon ash, or you know they can they they can have the abel star stuff, which they which they will, or bonfire, which they will. But at the end of the day, like what's the end board now? Poplar, it, Flambridge IP. Maybe it's good. Yeah. It's, um, the thing is, is Maybe also those are good hits, that the know. biggest. The biggest thing about the Snake Eye engine as well, what made Poplar Flamberge IP so good was not that IP and SP was an unbeatable interruption, but it was that it's enough to keep you alive. And then, dang, I have another round of Snake Eye Ash going in. But now you don't. Now, once you burn through that one Poplar, Snake Eye Ash is no longer a starter. So you actually have to go for Oak um, very often. It's a lot different a lot more different um so right now snake eyes loses a couple starters um and they uh, they don't have any many normal summons so that they play just worse cards in general and their follow-up is a lot worse as well so that's the biggest thing the follow-up is bad now for snake eye um uh, and that makes the deck just a little bit more fair because one snake eye ash is like a 10 th again it's just world c combo and the game's over yeah so that's probably what that's, been, that's i think that's a, that's a perfect an analysis of what snake eye was a board that is by definition unbreakable just because it has it's not that you can't play the game you can play into it but you will usually not kill through it and your opponent has Full combo, which is like OTK, next turn, guaranteed. That was the the best part of Snake Eye. It's like, turn one, huge board. Turn three, you're dead. Like, if you didn't, Dark Ruler, Puppet Lock me, you're dead. Um, mm -hmm. So, we'll have to see. It's going to be super interesting. Because, obviously, Snake Eye, now, it's going to be more of an engine in its own deck. And then... You know, people will fill it up with something else. Like, this deck will still... Snake Eye Fiendsmith is still going to be a deck that people play. The question is, how is it going to look like? It's probably not going to be super fun. <laughs> uh, I think Flambridge being a thing is still so annoying. But we'll probably have to deal with that for at least another format. And then, uh, you know, what we're going to get Azamina and people are going to want to kill themselves. The next hits are two Xyz monsters from the gimmick puppet strategy. I think this is hilarious. I think you're muted. Are you muted? Oh, uh, no, no, no. No, you're not muted. I shouldn't be. No, no. But I just fine. said, bye-bye. Yeah. Thank God, see I, ya. It's so funny they addressed it so quickly. Why'd you print this deck? I 
Why, why did, did you they? print those cards if both the OCG and the TCG immediately, like, el like this is an FTK deck. Let's not like beat around the bush. The mm -hmm. purpose of this deck is to burn. That is it. And like auto wins and stuff. They have like win condition cards. I think it's funny. I think it's seeing them makes me feel like Konami, like the person like driving the wheel doesn't really know what they're doing and that kind of worries me just because it's so like then why'd you do it why did you print those cards and and now you're i don't know it's so like fine i guess nobody cares you had like one ftk like you had one person in every top god that was like i had a good day today so i topped it doesn't really matter like right it's just luck at the end of the day yeah um yeah goodbye arvidarchi the next card on the list is branded fusion i'll let you kick it off i think it's fine i think uh, again the deck still has its identity which is branded fusion the card it's just when you do open branded fusion it is very difficult to just win the game uh you just run out of things to try and stop your opponent I think it's, uh, I mean, Branded Fusion in its own way is a very similar card to That Grass Looks Greener when it comes to just the amount of resources that get dumped into the game because you open the card. So now people can focus a little bit more on just stopping Branded Fusion from getting added to the hand uh, rather than just hard drawing it. Because when you hard draw Branded Fusion and open a couple of other starters, uh, it turns your standard combo into something that just plays through every single hand trap imaginable. Um, and you know, it's so difficult to stop the puppet as well, which didn't get banned. But I mean, to be fair, it should be Sanctifier on the list. Uh, basically, what I'm saying, fair ban. Um, if they open it, they open it. Oh, well. But the identity of the deck is not lost. And now with grass, it gets a little bit more yeah, interesting. I hope you didn't so play gimmick thumbs puppet. up on that one. Yeah. Thumbs up. That's kind of interesting, to be honest, because I think that Okay, so obviously I'm biased, but I'm going to try to stay as objective as possible on this topic. Um, the deck obviously, like, they obviously didn't want to kill Branded. Like, Branded is very important to Konami. Like, it's such a big chunk of the last decade, the the lore and, and the deck itself. And, and like, I'm, make, I'm working on a video right now of, like, the competitive history of Branded, like, since day one, how the deck evolved. And I got to say... I don't know a single deck that they put as much thought into as Branded that I've, I've seen. Like, as a strategy, it's, like, three years of work, and it actually worked as, like, Albion aside. Like, you don't have to play Albion in the deck. The deck is so, so whole and, and, and like, such a, um, such, such a complete strategy. But that aside, I think Branded Fusion to one is like th the fact that Branded Brand is not doing well, so well competitively on the big stage. Um, mm -hmm. You usually have maybe like the, the odd person topping with it recently. It's really hard, like with, with decks like U Bell and, and stuff. But mm -hmm. think about the fact that w they've considered like Apo is going to be banned now. Which could be a good buff to branded because like those negates are are hard for a deck like branded that need like the monsters to to run. Um, so maybe to balance out the entire format, they had to slap branded on the wrist and give a card as good as branded fusion, which no one can deny. It's it's a very good card. A limit. However, what if in an alternate reality, Sanctify would have just been banned? Like, isn't it going to be more annoying to lose to Branded now, knowing that they did acknowledge the fact that the deck needs to be addressed, but did not address the FTK problem? Um, I mean, it's, it, it is just generally harder to resolve said FTK. No, it's not. Um, it's not, though. It's not. Well, Like, Branded Fusion to well, one no. doesn't really do it. I mean, it turns you from, say, you're playing a 60-card deck, which is the the vibes right now. It turns you from drawing Branded Fusion from, I believe, what, like 22%, 25% um, to about 
So like that's a huge margin because when you open branded fusion, it's just so ridiculously strong. Yeah. Um I understand why they did now, it, but it doesn't really like if you lower the, the card count. It still exists. All, it still exists. All roads lead to branded fusion in that deck, and you don't have to resolve Alibur to get to branded fusion. There's literally 25 ways to get to branded fusion in hand. It's gonna be more annoying, sure. But like and even when you do, it's a little bit difficult to... Again, the follow-up plays is not Branded Fusion anymore. It's going to have to be through cards like Cartesia, uh, High Spirits, even just like a normal Summon Fallen of Albaz. Yeah. So, yeah, you have it, Spring End Kid and, and Brand Retribution to bring the Branded Fusion back to the hand, back. Fusion Duplication. Yeah. To, that's what I'm saying. I'm like... It's interesting. Okay, so answer me this. Put on the Konami hat, okay? Just put it on for me. Okay. Why... Did you address branded on this forbidden and limited list? The simple answer. Why did you do it? Um, hmm. What is the reason? Well, I will say that yes, branded fusion is a bit of an unhealthy card. Um, just it is again skill, very skill based card, but in its own way, it does facilitate a lot of. Like as a card, just it does facilitate a lot of just it's a bomb basically. When it resolves, you are in a automatically winning position typically. Um so I I can understand like that, but why huh. Okay. I don't wanna I don't wanna put you on the spot. My okay. thinking was that I like my thinking okay. was that one of the reasons the deck needed to be addressed right now, like think about it. Sanctifier gimmick puppet, I did that shit like a year ago at Nats for, for the first time. We've been doing this for a year. Why now? Why is this the time? And why is this the way you address it like that? I understand that it's sort of like a flattening of the format. However, what I'm saying is that I think I think they could have bought a lot of like um a, a lot of joy from from fans and players if they just addressed the nasty part of the deck because most people i talk to and i talk about this deck a lot obviously say that th they will would have been fine with just branded and sanctifier because branded is a cool deck that is just ruined by the fact that sanctifier is like it doesn't make sense to put cards on your opponent's board it just doesn't make sense you banned branded expulsion so Sanctifier is fine. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on, on Branded, though, because we have a lot of other cards. But, of course, leave it down in the comments because a lot of you are going to be Branded enjoyers. U-Bell is sort of like an up-and-coming deck. Obviously, it's way up there in terms of power level. It saw its first hit with Apollosa and probably like Beatrice to some extent. Um, and opening of the Spirit Gates is the way that they chose to address this. Of course, Lacrima, by the way. Yeah, it's also a uh, U-Bell hit. Mm -hmm. Out of all the engine cards, opening of the Spirit Gates, eh, kind of predictable, I suppose. Um, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like, the end board is much weaker without, like, the Fiendsmith stuff and, like, Apo. It's like, again, play Fiends. Okay, I guess. For now. Because it's very early still for the deck. I'm I'm cool with it. I I actually don't even think that like the probably would they probably wouldn't have needed to do that. <laughs> I still think the U Bell deck, by the way, is completely like a very beatable deck. I don't like their end board. If you play first of all without opening the spirit gates, uh, in their hand, just like thinking it in this situation, they won't always have it in their hand. Deck is a little bit worse to hand traps. Uh, just having that card, just slapping it down and getting no matter what guaranteed value out of it is... Uh, it, uh, that card is ridiculously strong to just extend. Um, going second, the deck is just now worse. It's again, it's just a, it's a hard card to deal with um, because it just generates so much value. Um, and the deck itself with no Appaloosa... Is not as scary. It's still very vulnerable to board breakers, um, in in its own way. They only really have, yes, they have Desiree and then typically Verudris, but 
you can you can play around those pretty simply with a droplet um and or even just try to like push through with engine and force out the desiree oh that the way. desiree it's kind of problematic with war breakers but yeah but i think i mean okay i've been playing fiends with musketeer and i've been able to i've broken full uvel boards plenty of times with just like baiting out the omni negate and then just dropping a link into the brains and you win yeah or again the one problem with that deck as well is it doesn't have spot removal besides like soul of rage so if you answer the soul of rage um then you can kind of just like put slap bodies onto the board uh so you know you have six cards in your hand theoretically so that's that they don't have six six negates necessarily yeah, up until now um, they did <laughs> kind of but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they kind of did with that kind of did um <laughs> but it's that, a, it's that's a fair the, for now it's it's fair it's fair for now combined we'll with how Apple, the shapes up. beatrice Slack i don't now. think i don't think that deck is as toxic as most people think it is yeah. um hot take but hot take on onwards and upwards pot of pot prosperity of finally jesus i would have liked to see it banned to be honest but um pot of prosperity and, and let's combine it with sanguine summoning anyway because we, we both know why these two are paired up um pot of prosperity in there's not a lot to talk about here pot of prosperity is better than pot of greed it doesn't matter what you think it is better than pot of greed and it should not have been legal for this long thankfully it's at one because it's just like a creative card they're not going to ban it completely but um good riddance screw that card i don't, I don't like that card dub, big dub dub that, that searches floodgates yeah dub. that searches floodgates and silver bullets and sanguine summoning combined with Thank prosperity God. like sanguine summoning is an unreasonable card um stop printing cards that make like that make monsters unaffected stop this game should be interactive like stop doing that my dragon becomes like a nearly unplayable deck so that's card. what i wanted to talk about like prosperity and second summoning are both at one in the ocg however tenpai dragon is currently the most powerful deck in the ocg granted they do like so it's a strategy that relies on going second which means it, it can abuse a lot of things. Like a lot of things that a normal deck can't do, it can do. When it comes to board breakers, hand traps, shifter, whichever approach you take. And in October, it becomes even better with the introduction of Mulchami Fuaros, which is essentially max C. So going second with that card is incredible. You get every board breaker you want. You're going to draw. Like it's, it's an FTK if you open that in tenpai hmm. so is that such a significant hit um hmm uh for saying and summoning i mean the thing is in general is there are more hand traps played than just max remember max c is a three of in every single deck and tenpai dragon as a deck invalidates that card just think of it like that now you can affect you can play effect veilers better you can play imperms better um uh, in your deck and they just function properly um because now you can actually like more often veiler a pydra rather than just having it sit in your hand as a literal brick and stare down your opponent as they go activate saying it's summoning normal summon and you lose yeah so in the ocg they can't really afford to play cards like effect veiler or extra cards in their deck because they need to play the maxi mini game first and foremost yeah it's nine cards uh do you actually you know right that's nine cards we have nine other cards to deal with this deck yeah and with saying summoning at one you actually have more tools to deal with tenpai dragon in general so i think this rocks i think i think i think it'll hurt a lot a lot more than than, than it does in the ocg i think we'll see it actually evolve until rage of the abyss i think rage of the abyss is going to be the true telling of whether this deck is resilient um honestly i was hoping for spheres or magnum i was really hoping for magnum to get banned to be honest i was praying for that card to get banned it really sucks that it didn't to be honest because it's still up 10 by buff essentially even at one 
Because they fucking draw it all the time. Yep. They just end face Genroku. And it sucks. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah. I feel like... You know, I, I'm, I'm skeptical. Cautiously optimistic, maybe. Because I'm really happy to see Prosperity gone. That's a hit to so many nasty things. I love that. Sang and summoning. Awesome. Hopefully you're right. Hopefully you're right. Because I hate that deck. That deck is just a mistake. Lastly, skill Children. drain. Woo! Konami. Dub. Let's go. Big dub. Ban all the floodgates. We're getting closer and closer, guys. We're Another dub. So close. They're understanding. Um, this ban list is just packed with cards. And uh, skill drain is a dub. Uh, they, they are... They they are kind of like massive pussies for not banning it, but okay. Um, I get I it. I think it's a completely fine floodgate, but in combination with other floodgates, it's completely degenerate. Yeah. Um, because get your power you sink can stones. play. Yeah, power sinks. Well, okay. So let me I'm tell you what's happening in the OCG right now. Okay, and there's going to be a video soon releasing on on the channel of like the OCG meta breakdown again. What? What, what are they doing in the OCG right now? So they have Snake Ash Limited. They have Wanted Limited. They have like uh, a bunch of other stuff, but they have like the Boss Monsters legal. So Snake Eye Fiendsmith, still a very good deck. Tenpai, very good deck. You Bell, sort of like up and coming right now, but not seeing a ton of play, even though Sharvar is a three. So what are they doing? Okay. Everybody's playing three Maxi, three Ash, three Droll, three of the new Mulchami. Okay. And some people are playing like two called by maybe one cross out. So people know that they're going to get hit by at least one, two, or even three maxis in a turn. Because you can maxi chain Mulchami and then chain another Mulchami t- theoretically later on in the turn. So what, what are people doing? They're playing skill drain, summon limit, and power sink stone in the main deck because they know that they're not going to be able to completely play out their turn. So they're like, yep. okay, so I'll give you a couple draws maybe, put up an IP setup, set a skill drain, power sink stone, you're, you're going to skip your turn, and then I'm going to kill you on turn three. So the counter the floodgates is more floodgates. Yeah, um, and all that in 40 cards. Like Their decks are basically just like set lists, set lists of one-offs. Um, so that's the, the the forbidden and limited section. We're gonna run through the next two because we're already almost the time. Blaster, Redox, Tempest, Title, Fine, Tiger could go to three. Doesn't matter. Colossus, um, yeah. Who cares? And Ib- uh, I, I, Colossus is the fakest card ever. Yeah, but I mean, continue. you you guys heard it on Table Zero first, by the way, where Fi said Colossus is the fakest, uh, and it ended up being that. Unlimited Armageddon Knight, Red Rose, interesting. I guess kind of interesting. Let's see. Uh, Kieran doesn't matter. Plush fire is getting an errata and is unplayable garbage. Ancient fairy dragon, Denglong, first of the Angzing, and finally, thank God, the unlimited time seal. Finally, fi- my uh, I mean, time fi- seal deck. Fi- <laughs> my, de- <laughs> my pure time seal. <laughs> de- um, I do want to now. I can trap trick for it. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus. Um. This has been a ride. This has been a ride waiting for this list, seeing this list in action. I do want to mention a few things before we run out. Um, I think the list is a very good direction, but I think it is so full of stuff that I'm super interested to see how it evolves and actually plays out on the field. Because it's not necessarily the most obvious thing just from looking at the cards, on what the impact is going to be on the meta. Phi here is saying that like Snake Eye is like severely hit, and Ubel wasn't really a deck to begin with, and Tenpai was hit pretty hard. However, there are voices online that are saying the opposite. And like, nope, we don't know who's right yet. And we'll see. Um, one more card that I missed was Arch Nemesis Protoss. Um... Which, that shit card should just be banned any. Why does that card? It's mostly because there's this worm deck coming out in yeah. uh, the next deck. So don't set. expect, don't expect. That was that was what I was saying. Like, don't expect um, 
don't expect it to get banned because it's going to push out the Ryuga deck that is basically a Protoss deck, um, unfortunately. And Ritual Beast, like, people love that deck. And Konami, like, actually, Ritual Beast is a deck that, like, uh, even though it's still capped Protoss and Shifter, Prosperity might be, might be good enough sometimes. Mm-hmm. Cause it, it's not that consistent of a deck. Th- that was a pretty obnoxious deck, to, <laughs> to be honest. Like, Shifter Protoss is not fun. Um, overall, I'm going to give this ban list a B-. minus, Maybe a B. Maybe a B. I'm, a, I'm, on, the, I'm on a B+. Plus. I enjoy it. Um, and I am excited. What are you excited for? I'm just excited to see how it uh, how it plays out yeah. um, and just try to explore what grass can bring to decks. Um, that is going to be an interesting card to see if it's worth labbing or not uh, to play these 60 card decks and just slap it in there. Um, that makes life pretty interesting. The power level of a lot of these decks and what makes them extremely resilient and strong has been lowered down to the level of certain other decks. I don't think the metagame will change too much, but it, I think it's a, a precursor to a potentially diverse format. So hopefully, that's my take. here's hoping. Um, thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode. We're like uh, right on time on the hour. Beautiful. Um, we're probably going to do some more of these pretty soon. We were kind of like sitting and waiting for the list to drop so we can do yes. an episode. So sorry for like, you know, I, I know mm-hmm. you guys like this. Um, we're going to try to do them as often as it allows us, uh, in terms of developments and news. Fi, anything new coming or going on, on the channel? It's again, it's, it, it officially is in production. Yeah, there so have been people been interviewed. Hey. There's going to be any um, spoiler, and t- any spoilers. What's, what's the video about? There's a reason I talked a lot about grass. Okay. Okay. So, guys. There you go. There you go. Um, but, that is the answer. But I hopefully it will be out um, by mid-September is what I'm gunning for. Cool. So um, I'm working on... I'm going to use my one month off of work to work on my branded video. The complete history of branded Despia. It's so cool <laughs> writing it because like you see how the and, and then this releases and then Grang and Yol releases. Like everything changes and then Bistials... It's so freaking cool. Uh, and then everything changed. And then the card was Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. No one expected it. Yeah. Um, still legal, guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Please make sure to like this video. Share it with a friend who thinks Sanctifier should have been banned. And don't forget to check out Fi's channel in the description below. Make sure to check us out on the podcast websites in the description below. And uh, we will see you on the other side. Peace out.